You ready to film another exciting episode of Real Good at Doing Stuff? I can't wait. Gotta be more exciting. I stuff. can't wait. Okay, good. There we go. Oh, oh, you, real, real, good. All right, today we're here. We're gonna tear down Andrew Tavornik's uh, LS build. We're really just tearing it down, take a look at things. Uh, this thing has been together for long enough to go pretty quick in LDR, but it's a relatively new build. We want, want to make sure everything's wearing right. So we're just gonna tear this thing apart and see what is good and what needs to get changed. All right, we're back at the uh, Real Good Doing Stuff Studios or the, the uh, Institute's for higher learning and adding real good stuff doing. Uh, and, uh, and if you're here for fitting in the channel, then welcome to the show. It's gonna be a little different. We talk about tech and it's all kinds of stuff. But today we're talking about something that I call, I call forensic tuning. And that is where we look at the motor uh, as we take it apart to see, to get clues about the tune up, to see where we're, where we're doing something right, where we're doing something wrong. And this is why I often say that the teardown guy and the engine builder all, in some ways, ought to be the same guy because there's so much to be learned from the teardown process and kind of sifting through the uh, ashes and seeing what we got. <clears throat> in this, in this case, this is a, an LS build, a small block deal um, with a, quite a bit of power, a single turbo deal. It's a new build. It's already been was it uh, 406, I think, somewhere in there. Um, LDR and LDR trim, right? Um, now we're going to pick up the pace at some point, but we kind of want to just look at things and see how they were. Some of the stuff was brought to me and, and kind of got in the middle of it. But anyhow, we're working on this thing. It's a work in progress. And uh, anytime we tear something apart, one of the first places I look is the wrist pin. Um, if you're beating on a cylinder, uh, the, it's going to show up in the wrist pin uh, very early. If you're looking at the rod bearing, if you're seeing beat up rod bearings, a lot of times, in my opinion, it's too late. Like there's, there are clues ahead of that. And one of those is the wrist pin. And a lot of times the way I check this is I'll kind of clean it out, make sure there's not a bunch of oil in there. I grab the piston and just work this thing back and forth like this. All right, and that one feels good. It's still real tight, real snug, right? Feels like it more or less when you put it together. All these feel pretty decent. But a lot of times if you've got a hole that's pissed off and it's, it's beating on itself, when you, when you do this check, it's not gonna be like that. You're gonna hear a bunch of squishing and, and, and you're gonna feel slop in there, right? And if that's the case, you better not put that rod back in that motor. Do not, because <laughs> it is coming out the side with a quickness. But anyhow, that's how you, that's, that's a good way of checking these things. We always check every, every single one uh, because it'll show up there uh, before things get south a lot of times. Um, another one, your ring gap. Your ring gap out of the bore right see how that looks it's pretty spread looks pretty about like when you put it in day one all right all right now look here look at that one it's half another thing if you were to carefully slide this ring off the piston and put it in the bore i can about guarantee you there's places where you see light around it because it's no longer round right if the heat has gotten to this and it's distorted somewhere in the Tune up process, this one's got a little pissed off. I actually probably don't think it's currently that pissed off, but at some point it, it did just a little bit and they got that ring a little hot. Um, but anyhow, there's several places that you can look on any of these things to find problems. And uh, you're a fool if you don't pay attention to this <laughs> because uh, it, it'll, it'll save you a bunch of aggravation. And we'll go over a couple of the other places we look. But overall, this thing looks pretty happy. There's a few things we're gonna tune up. 
but uh but anyhow that's a quick little little place to look okay <clears throat> now we turn down the heads and we want to look at some uh places where we can have or see signs of problems um a lot of times if your tune-up is out of whack or you have issues going on in that department when you take the heads apart you can look at the valve train or the valve seat area and look for trouble sometimes it'll beat the seat area where the valve actually sits because this is a relatively relatively narrow uh contact patch so it kind of absorbs a lot of energy there but also one of the first places i look is the where the seat meets the head where it comes together right here if it's detonating or beating up real bad a lot of times it'll roll an edge up and you'll feel it uh you know this head is perfect we haven't really got with the tune up much at all yet on this motor and everything looks great but a lot of times if you have something that's not happy there'll be an edge under the seat here and uh it doesn't always mean there's detonation if it's the head soft or old or wore out kind of sometimes it'll kind of try to do that anyhow but it can definitely be a spot to look uh, for problems um, in the tune-up department. Um, now, in this head, when we take it apart, we find this guy. We got one dead, dead soldier here. The spring has had enough and has checked out. So uh, if I remember right, we might have reused these springs when we put this thing together the first time and they were not in the best shape to start with. So we're probably gonna change this up completely That'll fix this problem, but this is why you gotta you know stay on your maintenance program because here it is, this thing's busted and that keep running this, this is gonna not turn out well at all. It's gonna drop a valve and then we're gonna have all kinds of problems. But anyhow, those are some things you can look at in teardown to keep yourself out of trouble, and then you can take that information and transfer it into your laptop. And, and uh, that's why the engine builder and the tuner are you know kind of inseparable, right? Anyhow, that's enough for today. Bye. Go, go, can you, can you do it good?